Hey everyone, it's Tuesday the 7th of May and it is 10 past 8 in the evening. Right, today's video. Um, I've got a small car boot haul here to go through. There's some various different bits of lighting, some electrical knickknacks, die cast, and a laptop. And that. And a few other bits that I can mention that I haven't actually got here at the minute because I can't get them from mums to here. Well, I can two of the items, but I don't need them here, so I can stay in the workshop. Um, before I go through all of that, I've got an update on my Yamaha Jog. Spoiler alert, I've got it running properly at last. <laughs> um, yeah. And just whatever else I can think of. So, Let's start with the moped. Let's get the sitting here talking boring bit done out of the way, shall we? So, just a quick recap. Last summer, I fitted a new cylinder on it after breaking the old one trying to fit a new exhaust. Um, and I went for a 70cc big bore kit, just because. Um, and ever since then, I've been having running issues on and off. It's been quite intermittent sometimes. It'll ride near enough okay but then other times it'll run run and ride like an absolute bag of shite um, and uh, gradually over the months you know despite me trying various things to see if I could find the cause it started to get uh, gradually worse <laughs> um, now the symptoms were if I tried to get up to 40 miles per hour or more, I couldn't simply because it would just act like it suddenly lost power. You know, like it suddenly lost spark or the fuel had suddenly stopped. So it just sort of like... I don't really know how to describe it. You'd just be riding along, you'd have your throttle, you know, wide open, trying to get the speed, you'd get up before you, then all of a sudden you just go... And it was fucking, I know I probably look stupid doing that, but I don't know any other way to describe it. Um, you know, the, the power, it, it was so intermittent as well. Because sometimes I could get up to speed, and if I got the throttle just right, it wouldn't do it. And then other times it wouldn't give me an option, and... In fact, most recently, when I rode it to Alsham Carbu about a week and a half ago, almost, it embarrassed me because it did it at 25 miles an hour with a pickup truck behind me on a countryside road, two-lane road, but still a countryside road, so there's all these bends everywhere. Um, and when it started, I had absolutely nowhere to pull over to allow the truck to come past. So he was stuck behind me because he couldn't overtake because of all these bends. You know, there weren't no safe place for him to overtake. And I couldn't pull in to let him come past because there wasn't anywhere. I had to ride, I don't know. I didn't actually have to ride for that long, just a couple of minutes, if that. Till I found a field entrance and just dived in there. Then I put it on its stand, sent a stand, and then just revved the absolute bollocks out of it. You know, I opened that throttle right up, and that would, for some reason, get it to behave somewhat properly, so I could actually ride it. <laughs> um, and on top of that, that was quite um, burbly. That's the best way, way I think I have to describe it. At lower end speeds, like between 20 and 30, it would just burble. It wasn't a nice, smooth rev it would just be but just burble basically um so a few weeks ago i actually got thinking well, i was just sitting here thinking about it i'd actually been thinking about this on and off for quite a while now you know my gut was saying it's a fuel issue and i think most people would agree it was definitely a fueling issue so I bit the bullet and ordered a brand new carburetor. A brand new Delorto, which is Italian, carburetor. 
and last Thursday I fitted it. it took me about half an hour. It's really not that difficult to fit. Um, you know, you just take your seat bucket off, which is I think it's eight. I can't remember if it's eight or six bolts now. Two, four, it's six bolts. It's two at the top and four on the inside. Yeah, six bolts. Um, plus the screw for the two-stroke oil tank. Don't forget that, otherwise you won't get your um, your sink bucket out. And you've got to disconnect your battery. You mustn't forget that either, otherwise you won't get your seat bucket out. Um, and then you've got full access to where your carburetor is. you just got to disconnect everything necessary. You take your screw out the top for your throttle cap. I have got the old carburetor here somewhere. There it is. So all you've got to do, that's the old one. So you pull off your vacuum line. You pull off what I'm assuming are coolant tubes. And your vacuum there. And then you've got your fuel inlet there. Unplug your e-choke. Undo your clamp for your intake manifold. And your air intake. And that's it. Then you can just pull this off your both the in, you know your air intake, your air filter, and your um, intake manifold, and you've got your carburetor. So you've got to undo the screw for your throttle body there as well. Um, now with the new one, I didn't touch a thing on it because you've got your idle screw and you've got your air mix screw that I didn't touch them because I thought. You know, don't, I didn't want to because I thought I just want to leave it as it is and just see if with the factory settings alone it's going to eradicate the problem. So I've got the new one installed. I'm pretty certain looking at the two carburetors that this one is just a generic Chinese carburetor. There is no brand name stamped on it. There is, however, a number of some sort in there. can't make out, not without my uh, super duper magnifier here. Um, M17.5-3, that's all it's got on it. There's nothing else stamped on this. Um, yeah, um, there was only a, there was a Two visual differences and one difference I noticed when I installed the new camera. The two visual differences, which is why I think this is just a Chinese copy of a Delorto, is the actual plastic housing for the e-choke here is bigger on the genuine one. And on the genuine one there's actually a hose that comes off the bottom of the fuel bowl here. And there's a little screw in the side right where that hose enters the fuel bowl. So I think it's like a drain hose maybe or a breather tube of some sort or maybe it doubles up as both um, hanging off the bottom and then when I installed it I noticed that it was a lot tougher to get the um, air filter box onto the air intake of the new carburetor than it is this one this one slotted in quite um, easily that one was a lot um, tougher I had to fight to get that on there so I'm assuming the diameter of this bit is a little bit bigger on the uh, Delorto. Um, the only part I reused, because this came with you know, your cap with your little metal tube at the top from the cable adjuster on. It came with all the um, throttle slide that goes in there and slides up and down when you move your throttle. Um, and I bought it with the e-choke and it wasn't cheap, it was 150 quid. <laughs> I could have got cheaper, I could have got another generic one like this. Um, I could have got one without the e-choke which would have been cheaper because I could have probably have just slapped this one on but I didn't know if this was being the problem. I didn't know if there was a problem in here. I mean I had this bike off that moped I don't know how many times over the last nine months and every time I visually checked it and I couldn't see anything wrong. Everything just seemed to function on it. I am actually wondering if it's to do with the main jet. Because I stuck a 70cc big bore kit on it, I was told 
to change the jet in this to a size 84. Um, the jet I bought was for a Delorto Cub, which fits this. But I'm not convinced this is a genuine Delorto Cub, and I am actually willing to bet if I ever find the original jet that came out of this, the original main jet, and put it back in this, and then stuck it on the moped as an experiment, I bet that would actually run fine. I've got a feeling that that's what the problem was. Because I think it was just chucking in too much fuel. But uh, yeah, did all that. Uh, started it up on the kickstart because obviously at that stage I didn't have the battery connected. And in four kicks, keep in mind there was a brand new cover out so that's bone dry. And she fired up perfectly fine. Um, I didn't rev the balls out of it here because I was at, you know, behind the flat. So, put everything back together fully. In theory, I should have just put four of the six bolts in the seat just so I could go down the road and test it. Um, you know, just in case it had to come off again. But I didn't. I decided just to go full out and just bolt everything back on properly. Went for a couple of mile test ride and she rode beautifully. Not one cough, spot, fart, nothing. It didn't lose power, it didn't do anything. It just rode as it should. And it got up to speed, as it should. No problem. Although the idle was a bit low. So last Saturday when I rode it to Mum's, it did cut out on me a few times on idle. So I did end up, when I was over at Mum's, just screwing in the idle screw. I think about half a turn, something like that, and it's been fine ever since. But that's, that's the only adjustment I've had to make. Um, she still doesn't like cold starts. She never has liked cold starts, actually. Um, but she was never this bad. She really doesn't. You know, first thing in the mornings, I'd go out there, and she did this Saturday morning as well, try and fire it up, and it's, she's acting like she's flooding. Uh, so, once you get it to start, she's absolutely fine. Um, but once she's had that first run of the morning, I can go back to it later and she'll start perfectly fine. So, I can only assume it is just cold starting she doesn't like. Maybe this isn't actually functioning on it. Maybe I should actually try one day putting this one back on. I mean, it's exactly the same plug, and as far as I know, it's working. So, uh, yay me, I fixed the moped, apart from that little niggle of the, um, not wanting to start properly in the mornings. When you do get it to start, it, she acts a bit like a, um, you know, a garden strimmer, or weed whacker, if you're in America, or um, a petrol hedge car. You know, something like that, where, um, when you first start one of those up, you can't rev it. It bogs out when you rev it um, until it's like warmed up a little bit, you know, when it's been running for like 20, 30 seconds, something like that, to a minute. That's what I have to do with the pads sometimes. Because if I hit the throttle, it just bogs out just like that. And it may even cut out. So, but I'm not too worried about that because the actual ride is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all now. In fact, I was enjoying it so much Saturday that when I left Mum's, I went on an extra longer ride coming home. I went the scenic route. <laughs> so I thought, why not? The weather's bloody lovely, you know? Go for a little ride. So I did. Right. Actually, speaking of um, my mother's, I'm going over there tomorrow. Because um, my sister... <laughs> She's managed to break a um, socket outlet in her bedroom again. It's the second time. And the same way as the first time. Um, and the first time she did it, something fell down the back. I can't remember what it was, but it fell down the back of her chest of drawers. Landed straight on top of the socket and broke it. Broke, didn't actually break the outlet, it just broke the back box. Um, so 
I replaced all that. And then my stepdad rings me this afternoon asking uh, could I pop over there tomorrow and uh, <laughs> replace it again. She's This time it's because she's pregnant she's got the bump and she bumped into the drawers while moving around in her bedroom and again I'm assuming the same heavy object just went Oof. I think it was a mirror. That's it. It was a mirror. Just fell straight in the back of the drawers and it's done it again. So my stepdad wants me to, I believe, add another socket into the bedroom as well. Um, they don't get a very good signal out there, so he was sort of breaking up on me, but that's the gist I got anyway. So, don't have any plans for tomorrow anyway, so it doesn't bother me. Uh, yesterday, which was bank holiday Monday, I was over there and uh, um, relocated the switch box for his pond. It's actually now mounted on the um, filter box, which makes life easier for him. And then we've got less cables trailing across the garden to the um, switch now. We've just got the one coming from the supply. Just the one. Nice big chunky 2.5 mil flex because um, the stuff that's made of is a bit more weather resistant that's why I opted for that rather than grey twin and earth cable because it's not as um, UV resistant believe it or not well, I suppose it's designed to be hidden in the house isn't it the, the um, twin and earth grey cables not out in the sunshine yeah so I did all that yesterday and found a big old spider in the outside socket. <laughs> was not happy because he actually fell out. I didn't knock him out, he just fell out. Yeah, so that's tomorrow's plans. I don't know what else I'm going to do tomorrow because it's not going to take long to do that socket. I think I will stop off um, at the department store. I've got Roy's, I think, and just grab a new socket and at least a new back box just in case. I'm hoping the socket itself hasn't been broken, but I'd rather take one and not need it, you know, than need it and not have it. <laughs> so I'll grab one of those. I might grab a couple of back boxes actually. That actually reminds me, I've got a brand new one down here to go in the kitchen because I've one behind the microwave is broken. I don't know how, I could only assume where I've been shoving things around on the worktop and whatnot. When I've been creating room and clearing stuff, I've just knocked it out of that microwave too hard and smashed the socket. So I've got that to replace at some point. I'd actually forgotten about it until now. I don't know how, because the socket's lying on the floor. It's here. It's there. In fact, I might actually just take this to Mum's. Actually, that, yeah, I'll do that, but uh, I haven't got any decent back boxes. All we've got spare are used ones, and I've got various holes in where we've knocked things out for cables and whatnot. I don't really want to use that in the house. I don't really give a monkeys when I'm using it in a workshop. Or something like that, or an emergency spare, but you know what I could use actually. Hmm. I might actually have some here that I could pinch and use, not from the flat. <laughs> it's just over Christmas last year, I made up some like. I suppose you could call it like an extension <laughs> with um, three double outlets on a bit of wood and a few spur just so I could run some Christmas lights with it. I might dismantle one of those but then again can I be bothered you know for what they cost new I might as well just go and buy a new one. Then again, do I really need a new one? I'm going to have to go in there anyway, so I might as well. Right. Uh, 
um, oh, he, was it yesterday? No, it was Sunday. I got a free mountain bike, which is now uh, locked up out back. Um, <laughs> it's rather rough, and it is only a budget brand bike, but I'm going to use that in a YouTube video. So, uh, once I've got some floor space cleared up here, it's going to be brought up here, and there's going to be a video made on it. That might actually be a bit controversial, because the hardcore cyclists, you know, that like to do things the proper way are not going to like what I'm going to do. Because... <laughs> uh, They're not bodgers, they're sort of cheats, if you like. Well, I suppose you could call them a bodge. But, uh... I just want to show how you could actually fix a bike like that. And get a working bike, a fully functioning working bike, without having to spend, you know, a bloody fortune on it. That's what I want to do with it. <clears throat> you know, I want to show that you don't have to go out and use brand spanking new cables that if you had like two or if you managed to get hold of like two or three bikes that just weren't working properly you should be able to make a good working one using all three of them you know using used parts that's what I want to do so uh, it would be easier to do that sort of video here than a workshop there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the bike is already here, and two, less uh, chance of a disturbance. You know, there's a higher risk of being disturbed over there from you know, mum or my stepdad calling me or my sister or something like that, you know. Right. I think we'll have a look at the uh, car booty stuff now. So, uh,. We address that on the computer screen first. <laughs> yes, I bought another bike. That's the second car boot of the year I've been to. And bought a bicycle. Right. So that is a Claude Butler well, Urban 100 hybrid cycle. Um, Normally, I would just ignore a lot of bikes, but it's a Claude Butler, and I absolutely adore Claude Butler bikes. You know, that is now my fifth that I own, but only four of them are actually rideable. Because <laughs> I'm currently working on one. Um, yeah, I've got one over at Mum's that I'm um, pretty much refurbishing. Yeah, so, that was on the first row. Not that far up the first row either. And it had a cardboard price tag tape to it, um, 35 quid or near offer, which I thought was cheap for a bike like that. Um, so I was, you know, standing there. And I was giving it a look over. I checked the bottom bracket bearings. I checked wheels and whatnot. You know, made sure there was nothing loose. Um, I don't think anything like that would have put me off. Now for me it's just so I know what I'm getting myself into and what it's going to need if I did decide to buy it. Um, and then the guy sort of shouted across, lowest I'll take is 30. And I was like, sold. <laughs> didn't even have to question it, didn't even have, you know, he said I could take it for a ride, but I thought, nope, don't need to. Take my money. <laughs> um, he said it all functioned, which to a degree it did. I did find when I rode it, when I got it back to Mum's, that the um, rear gears stuck. Like when I went from first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they would stick and they would take a little bit to drop down. If they actually dropped down. Um, but I sorted that out Saturday. Sorted those out. A new inner gear cable with the black outer tubing replaced all of that. I only replaced the inner gear cable because. I wouldn't have been able to reuse the old one. The old one didn't look that old. But the problem was where it had been clamped down on the Adralia in the cable clamp had been squished. 
and it didn't actually want to pull through the existing um, cable out of tubing so I had to cut it which meant it was too short and even if I did get it out without having to cut it I wouldn't have threaded it back on so yeah so got all that fixed it's 21 speed could do with the rear tire there's a bit of life in it but it's not brilliant uh, lowered the seat and well basically everything else I did was just adjustments to my own personal preference like handlebar height and position um, that's got my favourite style of gear shifter on it as well where um, it's, the brake and gear levers are all combined you've got your trigger thumb shifters and then you've got your brakes all in one unit I love that style such is a style I've got coming from my other Claude Butler hybrid because um, I've just put a set of uh, black rims like this in it. They were given to me by one of Mum's neighbours. Um, I'd already changed the wheels in it because the old ones, the rims had worn out so the brakes didn't work, even with brand new brake blocks fit. Um, you know, then the other day he gave me them um, black rims, 700 rims. And I thought, I know what I can do with them. I could put them in my Claude Butler. And then I wanted a new handlebar stem in it and I couldn't get the bugger out. I tried heat, heating the actual aluminium stem. Don't do that. I found out that's not a good idea. Because once it had cooled and I'd smacked it with a hammer, it snapped it in half. Because I was going to take it off and put it on a Claude Butler hybrid I've got outside, which I'm currently using. It's got the pannier bags and everything on it. And then put the one on this one on my one that's over at Mum's and my other one. Because the one I'm refurbishing, the one I've just put the black wheel rims on, it's just had a new chain fitted. Actually, the back wheel has actually got a brand spanking new, never used, seven speed freewheel on it. <laughs> um, I bought for it. I changed the crank set. That's not brand new, that is a used one, but it has been changed because the teeth are like 100 times better on this one than the old ones. That's what actually made me want to refurbish it in the first place because the front gears had just gone, the teeth had gone. So, it slipped every time you tried to pedal and the number of times I hurt myself doing that it really started to piss me off so but I really did like, do like the bike I mean I've owned it for five years and I bought it second hand so if, you know for me to use it daily for that five years almost daily um, I think it did well for a second hand bike and I really do like it I like that one better than the one I've got here because I was using the one I'm refurbishing as my go go for bike, you know, that's what I went I went to the shops on and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, once that is done, the one I've got outside will be sold. So that reminds me, I keep forgetting I need to look on eBay for a handlebar stem. I've just got to buy another matching one. Because it's got an adjust or had an adjustable handlebar stem like this one has. And the same with the one downstairs, that's got an adjustable handlebar stem. The one that came out of it is now in like, probably about half a dozen bits. Because I took the forks out of the bike, so I could have a go at getting what was left out. And I had to heat the steel part of the forks up to get the rest of it out. That just kept disintegrating. I think I was getting it that hot, it was actually just softening the aluminium. To the point, you know, when we twisted it and whatnot, it just broke out. And then we just, I heated it up the last time while my stepdad got a bloody great long drill bit like this and just knocked it through. And now the forks are back in the bike, minus the handlebars, they're just dangling there on the cables. Um, oh, I want to get another set of V-brakes for it, because I just want to clean it up and make it look nice. I wanted new gear shifters for it anyway. So these rims that I were given... It's got an 8-speed cassette on the back, so I thought, okay, a set of 3 and 8-speed shifters for it. Got the excuse I needed to get the new shifters. They work, they're just sort of weathered. Um, so yeah, they will go in the, part, uh, the spares pile. But yeah, I'm not going to put any baggage rack or panniers on that. I just want that left like that. I actually want to use that for going on 
cycle rides, you know, on the road with. I've tried road bikes, I do like road bikes, but I just prefer hybrids like this better. I mean, I have got a road bike I'm working on. I was having trouble finding a seat post for it, because it's an odd size being a Persia. Right, um, I need desk space to show you the laptop, so let's have a look at this stuff on here. So I couldn't resist, I had to get another one, it was only a quid. And I'm going to change the bulb in there, I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, wobbling around in there. It did work, you know, I took the battery cover off the um, battery on my Yamaha Jog and flipped it on. One pound, it's an old um, Mo Flash. Mo Flash is the company, Roto Flash is the type, and it's got Forest Lane Walsall staffs, which would be Staffordshire. Um, it used to be magnetic at least, and we've got the magnet there anymore. It's fallen out and see where the residue was when that was sort of glued in. You've got the little rubber bit as well, so you don't, you know, don't mark your paintwork. It's easy enough to change that bulb. I've got stacks of them as well, but they're all different brightness. Some glowed quite bright, and others didn't when I tested them all. Let's take one of these, that's all it's got in there. But uh, last summer I bought a whole job lot of various auto bulbs, some in boxes, you know, some not, some were just loose like this. And there's just shed loads of these and I had no idea what to do with them. Now I've actually got at least two beacons that use these. So, <laughs> got a use for them now, I think I've got a lifetime supply of these. You know, I'll only ever turn it on for demonstration purposes and whatnot when I'm playing around with it, so I don't, I don't need nowhere near what I've got. Right. The same guy, I nearly missed this. <laughs> but the same guy had this uh, little thing as well. It's just a little blue 1 watt Zenon strobe light. You know, they call it strobe flasher. It's got rate, rate voltage, 12 volt DC, but on the box, it's got 6 to 12 volt, 160 milliamps, so it uses next to no current. It does work, and it will work on 6 volts, it's just a slower flash. Um, I'm assuming because with the less voltage, it just takes a little longer for that. Um, discharge cap to charge up and discharge. It's even got the blue there. This pack contains a blue beacon. Um, but these are the sort of lights that would be used on like machinery and factories and whatnot as an indicator light. Don't know why what blue would be used for, but I've seen them in fact. You know where they often use green, red, or amber, which you can also get this in, and clear. And actually, in Liddles, I was rebuilt. Oof, I don't know how long that was rebuilt now. Um, a lot longer than I'm thinking. It's got to be at least sort of six, seven years ago they rebuilt that store. Um, they stuck an LED version of this up on the ceiling, and for some reason, it's just been flashing ever since. I think I've seen it off like a couple of times in all these years. Other than that, it just spends its time on the ceiling flashing away. I have no idea what it's meant to indicate. So, IS plus F or something written on the top there. An AA14. Not a lot of details. You've even got the little uh, foam pad for mounting it onto a surface without damaging it. Continuing with the theme of lights, I've actually got this and a few little knickknacks which I'll show you as well. So I've got this old security floodlight, the twin spot. I 
used to see these everywhere when I was younger. And I always wanted one. I don't know why, but I always liked the look of them and always wanted one. Um, and in the recent sort of last couple of years, I've been looking for a fitting like this because I've got the bulbs in my collection. I've got, I don't know, about four, maybe six. The par 38 bulbs at this take. Big old spot bulbs. So that plus some various lamp holders actually. I don't know where the fourth one is. I've got four lamp holders. But they're vintage ones. See? I've got this peculiar looking one. I've never seen that one before. There is another one somewhere. There it is. Found it. Which Looks like it plugs into something. But well, it's just a, it's the same fitting as that, just the standard UK bayonet cap. But with uh, plug pins on it. <laughs> um, oddly, I'd, uh, um, plug pins that you can actually move. <laughs> um, oh. Okay, hang on, just give me two seconds. I'm only going in the kitchen, so I'm going to be a million miles away. No point pause on the camera. Curiosity has just got the better of me, that's all. So, I've had this old socket for a long while, you know, it's the old UK with the round pins like that. So I'm just curious. With a little bit of adjustment, would that no it wouldn't because I need the earth pin to go in there to move the shutter. I can't believe this one actually has that. I do actually have the three pin round plug as well. Or well, the three pin round pin plug I should say. When he does, I'm going to have to take a photo of these and put on the um, Vintage Mains Plugs and Electrical Curiosities group on Facebook. Because that one is intriguing me. Yeah, I've got those two and I've got two of these. Yeah. Two of these, um, I've lost a screw out of that one. I'll take Edison screw, it looked like they had a shade or something on there at some point. And a little hanger on them. I don't think I can actually reuse these. Because the reason screw I've lost screw out of this one is because I took it apart to see if I could get into there to get to the electrics and it's not easy. I think it is doable though. I wish I hadn't lost that screw. It's going to be on the floor around here somewhere. But I just thought they were unusual. They look like, to me, that they would have been part of like a festoon string. If you have your cable coming in, you could hang that up and then you'd have another one coming out, even though there's no other wires coming out of this. This one's got two screws in, so I might actually steal a screw out of that one later. But yeah, so I've got all four of these lamp holders and that security light for four quid. So, I was pretty happy with that. In fact, I'm just going to drop all of this in here together. Uh, right, die cast next. And there's going to be some bonus models to show. Because I've been shopping on eBay for um, reproduction parts. In fact, I ordered a few more today from the same seller. I'll just readjust the camera a bit. Whoop. Shaking it all over the place. Right. Oh no, there's one more thing before we get onto the um, die caster. I don't know how I forgot this, it was right in front of me. Vintage bicycle light, ever ready rear guard. But after one of these, the square fronted one for a while, and it works. I did have a few, but they were pretty much knackered. 
and didn't work because of that. Um, we are missing the plastic bit that goes in there, but I have got a few spare, so I'm worried about that. The only problem is, I can't remember what bike I wanted to put it on. But it was only a pound. You tried getting it for that price on eBay. You know, I've looked on eBay several times and these lights are not cheap, especially if you you know you wanted one that was boxed maybe. And that is in fairly good condition as well. Right. Now <laughs> We can uh, get on to what I've got here. I'm just trying to. Remember what was what. You know, what I got from the diecast guy and whatnot. Right. Yeah, I'm going to start with this one. This is actually the biggest. So I found another model master. This is one I'm like. Tin ones. Um, not the best model in the world, but Mum noticed this. I didn't, but it is actually a right-hand drive, not left. But it's got two identical of these, so it looks like you know that was designed to like stick the steering wheel on either side. Okay. Now he's watching snow, I just wonder what the heck Smudge was doing through there. Um, that was actually the most expensive item I bought last Saturday, that was £10. Right, um, yeah, I actually stopped off at the Diecast Guy's stall after I got that bike and he um, kept it behind his stall for me so I didn't have to walk around the car boot with it. So, a die-cast guy actually has things sort of, uh, um, what do you call it, so, he has stuff on the bench, which is the more collectible stuff, and then he's got a box on the floor, which is what he calls his kids box, which I just got random, um, die cast ones in there, the not so good ones. Basically, the stuff that's not really worth anything to a collector unless a collector just wants something for some bits. But the kids absolutely love it, you know, and he sells it 50p each or three for a quid. Anywho, first off, I got these off his bench a couple of Corgi uh, comma vans. Um, I think these are the ones where you can interchange these rear bodies, I think, which I believe came as a set. Now I have got the yellow one, that had a yellow sort of truck body on it, but I haven't actually got the, um, I haven't got the van, I've just got the body. But yeah, I believe that came as a set, or you got like the van and you had different bodies you could swap over on it. Um, I'm gonna have to look it up. I have to look it up. But these are bu they both got screws in, so you can change the bodies on these. Uh, and also on his bench, he's got um, a matchbox carry case, which I think he's got two of them. And he puts his nicer, smaller matchbox and Hot Wheels and things in, and the more uh, collectible stuff. And I picked out these two. I picked out a Husky tow truck. Because that is in very nice condition. We haven't got a hook on the tow, tow arm, but the truck itself is nice. And a Corgi Rockets. That one Ford Escort. I think he's actually had this for a while. I'm surprised uh, no one had picked it up. That's the thing with car boots though, you know, you do get a lot of stalls there that specifically sell collectible items, you know, vintage items. But because a car boot is so unpredictable, it's 
to sell anything, you've got to have the right people turn up that day and they've got to be willing, you know, to part with the cash. But I find most people that will attend a car boot are just looking for bargains, you know. I mean, you do get the odd collector there. I've sold collectible die cast as well. Um, I guess it also depends on what you got, especially when it comes to die cast. I mean, I've got shitloads to sell in the bedroom. I've added to the for sale stuff today because I've been sorting through it. Uh, I'm pretty certain that. I'm actually pretty certain. I've got some missing now that I look up here. Uh, but I can't. can't see it, but I can't actually remember what the heck is missing either. Right, anyway, let me just show you the last three I got from the Diecast Guard. These were in his uh, 50p box. Got two matchbox models of yesteryear. Only but he had a few of these, but these were the most complete ones. This one's lost the seat out of the back, but other than that, they're complete. The wheels are complete. They're undamaged. So, you know, it's three for a quid. Now, I actually can't remember whether I got this out of his box or this. <laughs> I think it was this one. I think I got this one from another stall. Oh, here's the other thing I got. It might have been them three then. Yeah, so I've got this little uh, Lesney uh, truck there. Uh, what is it? I think it's a military fuel truck of some description. Let's just have a look. Oh no, it's a 200 gallon water truck. I can't get the light to hit the bit above it. Austin! It's an Austin of some sort. It's in military green, so I assume it would have been something the army would have used, like a water bowser or something. Great. <coughs> it would have been... Oh, hang on. One more I forgot about that I got from the die-cast guy. Got this little Made in Japan truck. Don't actually know what it is. <laughs> Didn't, I haven't looked. So it looks so it's uh, a dandy. Oh, it's a Tamika. Ooh, I didn't know that. I'm oh, I'm glad of that. It's a Hino, a Hino number twenty-eight dump truck. Hino, Hino. Made in Japan. Tamika still make models. That has actually got a fair bit of weight in it. It's a shame it's lost its tailgate, but it's a nice truck. Get the doors open. No, they don't. So it just tips. Body tips, cab tilts. I've got a detailed engine on there as well. It looks like that's uh, an inline of some sort. Probably an inline six or something like that. Just got something written on the road. <laughs> it's actually got Hino written on there, or Hino. And on the badge, on the, the um, nose. Is there anything on the back? No. No. I'm going to presume that is Japanese on the side. And on the same row, in a box of stuff, I managed to find that. A little um, Atlas Editions bus. It is... I had read it. I did know. I just can't remember it. So... Get it up the right way. A Burlingham Seagull. Yeah, Atlas Editions collections. 172 scales, so it's not quite... Your OO gauge scale, but I'm not sure you'd actually notice the difference. I mean, it looks close to me, it looks very close. 
Well, that was only a couple of quid. Uh, <laughs> then there was a stall where I actually only wanted to purchase three items, which was this Matchbox uh, flatbed truck, which is just called a construction transporter, a Matchbox trailer. I have got a blue trailer over there with a carrier written on it, but that looks a lot darker than this one. And a Corgi Mars trailer, um, which cost me three quid, but he also threw in. And these are just going to go into a random job lot on eBay when I get to it. Apart from actually, no, this one I'll put up separately, but that one will go into like a random scrap job lot. So I've got that. And another one. I think I've got like four of these at the minute. So yeah, these will just, like I said, they're chucked in for free, so whatever I get for them on eBay is a bonus. I don't need them, I don't need to keep them around. Uh, and I found that, not really my sort of cup of tea, but I haven't got it in the collection, so I thought I'd uh, grab one. I can't remember, is it a rocket or something that goes on the top of this or a missile? I can't remember. I've got to do a little repair there, maybe. No, it has actually locked itself back into place. Magically. This bit was loose and was turning, but nope, it's no one there, nice and snug, so. I've got that, I don't know why I'm putting everything back up there. I need it off there, don't I? Oh, that's a bit louder than I Ah, I knew I was missing one. I knew I was missing one. Uh, so, I found these on another store, which I can't remember what I paid for them all now. I've got the Husky Dumper, Majorette Citroen Diane van. I think that's a Diane. Got a Matchbox sort of mini transport of three plastic cars on it and a Peugeot 205 oh that was also a freebie I'm going to donate that to charity I've got a box of uh, Hot Wheels fantasy cars and things I always whenever I get those I collect them up and then just take them to a charity because there's a lot of fantasy stuff I'm not interested in literally just a handful here and there I, you know, take a liking to, so I'm going to chuck it down there actually because I can see four down there. Three. Uh, when I found this, I was a bit miffed because there was an old guy looking in the same box. Um, I didn't even notice the box was there until I heard him shuffling around in it and I looked down and he picked up a lovely matchbox tow truck. But I did find that in there. So I'm not that miffed. I've got a nice little Unimog. And oddly, I think this is one of my favourite purchases from uh, last Saturday. This tractor. Matchbox tractor. I really don't know why. I did. I've started to like this a lot more than I thought I would. <laughs> that is in such good um, condition as well, considering what's the copyright on this. It's a, a mod tractor is what it's called. So the copyright started 1973, about 10 years before I was born. So if we assume that would be roughly its age, give or take a few years, or rather give a few years, because uh, this could have been released, you know, in following years, but they would have still just had the 1973 copyright on it. It's in there. Relatively nice snake. So, put that down there. Put these on here as well. And then I'll quickly uh, go through some bonus models that I've bought. Some uh, spare parts for something I've been 
wanting to do with a lot of these for a while. I'm not going to put those on there because I do want to put them in the base, so I might as well put them separately. I may end up putting that on eBay as well because I think I've already got that. It depends what I, whichever is the better one. Right. So I decided I'd go shopping on eBay for um, some reproduction parts for some of my Matchbox models. Um, especially bulldozers because I've got several minus the rubber tracks because they actually dry out and rot and then just split in half. I've had some do it which really did pee me off because they were the original tracks. Um, either that or kids pull them off. <laughs> um, I had a few, several vehicles here actually that I want to put them on. Um, they're not actually that cheap for a pair. They were like four pounds something for a pair of these. Um, so I've got two different versions of the snow track as you can see. I've got one with snow track where it's actually st embossed or stamped into the bodywork and one where it's a transfer. So I bought new tracks for that, for those. That one's not in actually bad shape. I've got two big bull bulldozers that I bought um, some tracks for me. Yeah, I can see here where it's come off the moulding. There's like a little tab there I need to trim. I have actually ordered some more and show you why in a minute. Then I've got two little red case ones that I've ordered for. I've actually got another one of these but I don't want to order tracks for it because like I said they're £4 something and there is no way I'm going to get more than £4 for that so it's just not worth it. I might as well stick it on eBay for a 99p and then someone else can buy it and get the tracks for it. And fix it up themselves. Um, oh yeah, that's one of the things I ordered tracks for. So I wouldn't mind doing a full resto on that. Shouldn't be a, a difficult resto, resto rather. I don't know if I'm going to get the um, loader arms off I could just leave it as it is. Um, see, I have gone back and ordered. I've ordered a pair of these because he didn't have them specifically for that one, but the wheelbase, the wheel spacing is exactly the same on that. Or I could have gone for green ones because that's exactly the same spacing as well. Um, but I thought black would look better on that, so I just bought another set of black ones for the big bull. Then. I also bought the um, cargo for the Mark 1 Ford Transit. Now this is in original condition. I've not restored this one. I've got one on the bedroom shelf that's restored. Well, I decided to stick that in there. And I might actually get another one for the um, restored one. Um, so I featured this in a previous video. It's the um, Leyland pipe truck that I got in a previous haul from the diecast guy, I believe. And it was paintwork was in lovely condition. The wheels are in lovely condition, but it was missing the black plastic bracket. Well, I found one of those on a really scruffy one of these that I had in my box of older Lesney stuff. So I stole that and glued it onto this one. Then. The same seller I got the tracks from, I ordered the pipes because I did a bit of googling and it seems that they just it came with the same sort of pipes as the red pipe truck. So I've got the pipes for it. Do need to uh, pop an elastic band around that, but I also went and found up the best red pipe truck I've got and put some pipes on that one as well. I do want to get one of these restored though at some point. Now, 
there's a couple of bits that I do want to go on eBay and order. Like I want to order the uh, girders for this one. Because that isn't in too bad shape for its age at least. And I've got a few of these in um, various conditions. Clean some in some nice conditions, but they're missing the ladders. Well, I found someone that does the ladders. In fact, it's the same guy that does the uh, girders for this. I may order those later. Uh, and if this was actually in better condition, I'd have ordered another set of pipes for it. Maybe I could just order some pipes for it at some point and uh, then I can restore this. But to be honest, there's no way I'm going to match that paint up. No way. Then, on the floor, <laughs> I found tracks. For that, that one, and that one. That one's got a track, and I've got the truck for this as well. So I thought, you know what? I know the truck and this the dozer is not in really It's just the bigger brother to that, really, isn't it? It's the Super King's version. Literally just the Super King's version. Wouldn't it be funny if I've accidentally ordered the same tracks as the other ones? <laughs> but yeah, this has got... Um, this is an original track. But look at it, look. That's what happens. It, they shouldn't retain their shape like that. They sh <laughs> should be a bit more flexible. That is solid, look. If I actually... Yeah, I can't. If I actually move it, it's going to split and crack and break in half because you can see it's already uh, got a lot of dry cracking it because that's the problem with these, they just dry out over the years but you know when stuff like this is made in the factories they don't expect that anything is going to last as long as some of these have you know, they're, they're manufactured as toys so I guess for the most part they expected these to either get pulled off and lost or, you know, this whole thing would have ended up in the bin eventually. So I'm awaiting those. I ordered those today so they're going to be a couple of days before they arrive. The seller was pretty good with the other stuff. They arrived, uh, when did I buy those? bought those at the weekend and they arrived today actually. <laughs> I can't believe how stiff this is. Yeah, that is that is just gonna split as soon as I try to do anything with it. Well the colour's not an exact match, but if you think about it, that, considering its age and how far back that when I spit my words out, how bad that is condition wise. It's probably sun faded as well. So that is probably actually closer to the original colour than that is. Let's find it all. Do they have green tracks? It's where I'll Google it now then find they have black tracks and I got the wrong ones. The problem is these tracks don't have the little grooves on them because the wheels have got like a a ridge on them I suppose they're supposed to ride in a groove on the tracks but because these are repros they don't have that which it's not a, a problem because you know at this point they're going to be done by collectors they're not going to be played with so yeah it's, it doesn't matter really does it right tuck these over the back here and we're going to chuck them on there because the tracks will fall off and the pipes will go everywhere. And These two big bull bulldozers I've got are actually in really good condition. They're definitely worth spending like the four quid on to get the tracks for those. And one of these uh, red case tractors aren't too bad either. I mean that one, if I want to do a full resto on that, it wouldn't be hard. I don't need to touch the base. I think that's good enough to leave as is. So I just have to drill that rivet, take it apart, and basically just 
repaint the red body and that is it. Put it back together again. That one would be a bit harder because I'd have to replace the snow track and I'd rather keep this one original. I don't want to mess around with that one. That and I just suck at doing transfers anyway. Right. Let's get this up here. And then I'll just mention a couple of other items that I got at the car boot that are not here. Uh, two of them because I just don't want them here, I don't need them here, so they're in the workshop. Oh, actually, I will bring the high vis waistcoat back. So I found a high vis waistcoat for a quid with fire team written on the back. That little um, waterproof thingy on the back, which just intrigued me. And but then I found a hard hat, proper building site hard hat in green with the white cross on the front, which um, you know would signify first aid. That was a quid as well, so I thought, you know, just for funsies, I'll have that and keep it in the workshop. And the other thing that's there, which is just too big to bring over on the jog, I've got no flat area on the back to strap it to or anything like that, is a PC. I actually found a PC, which at least at Alsham Carboot is not something that happens very often. Um, which is a shame, really, because I wouldn't mind picking up just spares or repairs computers like that. Oh, I don't mind gambling for £10, although at Mum's I did plug this one in and without me even hitting the power button it is both flashing and beeping and error code up. It's an HP Pro Desk with 12 gigs of DDR4 RAM installed, but like I said, it's not actually doing anything, it's not letting me do anything. It's just beeping an error code at me without me even having to press the power button. So, I have absolutely no idea if it actually works or not. <laughs> um, if I can, I'll find a power cable and plug it in tomorrow when I'm at Mum's. And uh, note down what the error beep is, because the flashing power LED light is the same as the code. I can't remember if it was three long beeps or four. But I'm pretty certain that was five short ones. Anyway, I also found this nice Acer for just twenty pounds, um, and the seller was totally honest. Um, you know, he told me obviously he couldn't prove it at that car boot sale, but he said it does work, it does turn on and whatnot. Um, he said he was. It used to be his that he used all the time until he, he just found it was getting too slow and just decided to upgrade. Um, said I had Windows 7 on it. I'm sure that was Windows 10 when I booted up because that was the Windows 10 loading screen. Um, well, it might have been Windows 8 actually. Which I think is what this actually shipped with, Windows 8. Uh, he said that the battery just didn't hold charge, you had to use it with the power supply, which it came with. And I have actually got it working, eventually. There we go. It's um, got a Western Digital 1TB hard drive, which I actually had to connect to the PC because I had to convert it back to, is it an MBR? Because it was a GPT, which of course wouldn't allow me to install Windows to it when I ran the bloody install. Now, thankfully, I've got this little doodad. <laughs> it's a USB 3, and I have tried this. This will only work on a USB 3 um, socket. It's not a connector on that side, so I can connect both you know, desktop drives and well, SSD, anything sound really, on like that. I don't know, I haven't tried it, but I would assume I could use, potentially, a DVD drive. Because I suppose it would be whatever the PC sees it. Now, 
I had to open this up to get the hard drive out, and I hate doing that. I, oh. It's easy to get this top panel off. You just undo all the screws on the bottom, and just put something in like the corner, and instead you just pry it up and boop. But you then got ribbon cables for your mouse pad and your keyboard. And of course, I broke both connectors. Um, although I did manage to fix the one for the mouse, I did get the clip back on for that one, but it was an absolute pig for the keyboard. But I got there in the end if it hasn't dislodged itself, so I'm just going to do that and just... Yep, we have working buttons, so it is still working. I just don't want to drop it, because I've got a horrible feeling if I drop it, the keyboard's going to start malfunctioning. <laughs> but it did, it took me like four times longer to put the damn thing back together because of that. Uh, and it did to take it apart. Why? I can understand why they use those flimsy ribbon cables. You know, they're cheap, they work, they're flexible, which is ideal for things like this. But they designed the connectors to be A, so freaking fiddly, and B, so fragile. You really have got to be careful with them. <clears throat> And it's not helped because I don't give you enough hand room under there to get the cable in or out, which is the other thing I hate about this style. But, yeah, somehow I've deleted the recycle bin. I don't know how I managed to do that. I really don't know how I'm, I don't know what happened there. I was just trying to get all this together while it was turned on and whatnot, and somehow I, I just wiped it. <laughs> Um, spec wise it's not brilliant um, the sticker on here just says Intel inside oh, that's just me I'm not clicking on it right I mean it's not that slow is it loaded all right it's um, got 4 gigabytes DDR3 RAM, which, as the motherboard, literally just takes up the middle space there, and I'm not kidding. I couldn't see a, a dim slot for RAM, at least not on this side of the board. And I've got a funny feeling if I took the motherboard out, it's going to be soldered straight to the board anyway. So, I don't think it's, I'm pretty certain this hasn't got any ability to upgrade the RAM, it is just as it is. Yeah, 4 gigabytes uh, DDR3, it actually says it here. Still got the Aspire, it's an Aspire E15 by the way. It's got all the specs written here, yeah, 4 gigabytes DDR3 L memory, whatever L memory is. 1000 gigabyte hard drive, yes that's on here as well. And even the um, processor matches so everything, it's, nothing's been changed. Intel Celeron processor. 2957U, that's what we should have, a 2957U, yep, at 1.4 gigahertz. Nice! And like I said, at the moment, it's not actually that slow. I think that's all it needed was just a bit of a refresh. It'd probably be faster if I stuck an SSD in here, but I ain't got any. And in fairness, this is pretty quick with that hard drive. And again, it's Western Digital, and I personally like Western Digital hard drives. I think they are one of the better ones that you can get. I've not had this connected to the internet yet, so it's not done any updates or anything. But you know, I don't think that was a bad buy for 20 quid. The seller was completely honest. I think next time I go to car boot, I'm going to hope he's there. Because he had some um, scopes for um, air rifles, which I could do with a new one for mine. I didn't think to get one when I saw it, I should have. Right, stack that down there. Um, I think that is actually it guys, I can't think of anything else at this precise moment. 
Oh, I didn't uh, get much else at the car boot apart from Claude Butler the sixth there. I say the sixth because it is the sixth one I've owned. But I can't really own five because I sold one of the mountain bikes. I did have three mountain bikes at one point. I've got two mountain bikes and three hybrids. But yeah, that one goes nowhere. And that is, I suppose you could call it my leisure bike for leisure rides. Very nice bike. Rides beautifully as well. I had to put the seat all the way down because I'm such a short ass. But I can ride it comfortably like that. I don't really need it any higher or lower. Excuse me. Right, I'll get rid of the video here then. As like I said, I'm pretty certain I've covered most things. We're coming up to the hour mark. I just think we've gone over an hour looking at the clock. I actually can't remember what time we started now. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. You know, as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And uh, feel free to share any of my videos. You can share them wherever you want. And uh, maybe consider subscribing as well so you can keep up with... Uh, future videos that I upload and whatnot. Um, and in the video description, which will be below the video, down there somewhere, there will be links to my other two YouTube channels. If you like your gaming and you like that sort of stuff, I have a gaming channel. And I've got a channel for all the LEGO related stuff as well. That's why you don't see much of it on this channel. And I will also include a link to my Discord server and my Twitch channel so feel free to uh, maybe subscribe and follow and join and whatnot and I will uh, see you all in the next video. Bye!